Hey everybody, Josh here. So I'm just gonna work on my whittling to talk about a question I have that I wanted to answer. So the question is when when and how it's a micro load. So for instance I have these washers and if you watch my training clips you should see that I have a one inch bar. So I have a one inch bar and the one inch washers fit perfectly. And each of these weighs one ounce, 16 ounces, yeah. In a pound, we, we Americans, we do things weird. But here's the thing, if you want to load a heavier bar, you know, I have these bands, and technically they're more expensive than a microplate would be. But the thing is, you could use, like, any sort of rope you had lying around and just tie. Yeah, it's not going to look as cool. But here's the thing. When would you want to microload? Here's the thing, if you're microloading your squat or your deadlift, meaning anything less than five pounds, uh, certain strength coaches would just recommend, yeah, you should just go to an intermediate program. Here's the thing, you might wanna look at, you might wanna look at, okay, am I actually doing this correctly? Is that the way I can't make progress? Am I recovering? Am I doing the exercise correctly? Am I resting between sets if I'm not completing the last set? Now, if you're doing the press, with the press, it's acceptable to microload. The bench less so, it depends on, is this upper, is this function like a big lift or a small lift? You know, if your bench, if you need to like immediately microload, basically when you get to your body weight, so, if you're like 155 pounds and you get to 145 pounds and you immediately have to start like microloading, then it's probably, then you can actually continue to make novice gains. But if you're getting into the 200s, here's the problem with microloading. So I'm going up two and a half pounds every two days or every, Every other workout you would do on the starting strike, you go up five pounds. Here's the thing, if you're going up two and a half, that means you're making about three and a half pounds a week. Well, why not just make, you know, they say, why not do five? Well, you can't do five, but instead of making, doing three, three to four pounds a week, just load once, do two or three, go up. So, for instance, microload weekly. You know, so the thing is, if you're going up five pounds per workout, you're going up five pounds every four days. If you're getting to the point where you're already microloading, your week going up weekly might require microloading. But here, here's the thing: say you want to microload your bench, you're like, "Hey, I'd rather make progress through." three times a week or every other workout instead of once a week. How long would you go about this? Okay, so it's like you just add a pound where it's like, okay, I add, I, I unscrew the clips and then I add eight of these micro clips. Or alternatively, each of these weighs an ounce. So I just slip this on the end of whatever I'm using. So, Here's another question. How would I go from the big, the starter, the quote-unquote starter bar, to the big Olympic bar? Here's what I would do. I would go, I, I would pick something like 85, maybe 90% of your working weight. Pick the majority of your working weight. Crank out eight reps with that. And then wait wait an hour or two, half an hour, hour or two, do your actual workout, and then go up 10%. Here's the thing, I'm very addicted to progress. If I miss the last, if I miss the last set, I'll, <laughs> I'll wait four hours and complete the, um, complete the, uh, five rep set afterwards. And here's, here's another question. I don't actually think the reason why novices make gains is volume. I I think it's increasing load, increasing stimulus with 
sufficient volume. So, for instance, if now here's the thing, I, I I think if you're going from a novice program to an intermediate program, it has to represent some, it has to modulate the volume. But here, here's the thing. It doesn't have to represent an increase in volume every week. All right. So, what else do we got? Yeah, so for instance, how, how microloading would work. Say, for instance, your first day you bench uh, 100 pounds and then the next time you mount a Herculean effort and you get 110. Then you go 115, 120, 125, 130, all the way up five pound jumps every every other workout until you're doing 190, 190 pounds. Or in kilograms, I think that's like, is it in kil it's like 80 kilograms. Okay, so, and so you're doing 190, and then you start microloading, and it's like two and a half, and you go up, and the thing is, you're go you're not gonna get that as long. So you microload, and then you get to say about 220, and you're like, that lift stalls, and you're unable. That lift stalls on the first set, having stalled on 190 on the last set. Now, that's the point where you'd want intermediate programming. So, you'd want to microload when you stall on the last set. The thing is, stalling on the last set, that represents you're struggling to make progress. Um, stalling on the first set could mean recovery. Um, how would you say that? So, st stalling, on the last, stalling on the last set would mean... Okay, I'm taking two big jumps. Stalling on the first set means literally, um, I'm not recovered from this, meaning I can't make, you know, one one pound jumps every workout. But then the thing is, it's really, um, it's really minutia because it's like, okay, at that one ninety, we're just have going up five pounds. You could instead of going up one pound a workout or three pounds a week, or two, two pounds every other workout. Instead of making half progress, you could you could make two thirds of half progress. So you could just, instead of going up one pound a workout and getting three pounds, you could go up two pounds. Now here's the thing, um, going, using an early intermediate program in the late novice stage, um, that's not going to represent any loss of lifetime gains. Unless you're like 70 and then it's like, um, at a certain, unless you're, unless you're likely to not be with us that long, it doesn't represent, you know, it's like you can get through novice programming in two to nine months and then let me put it this way. Say, for instance, you're you're going up on the squat and you're going up five pounds of workout. Five pounds every two days. Sixty pounds every four weeks. So in eight weeks, you're going to go up 120 pounds. But people think they're going to run a, a, a program such as starting strength, strong lifts, or I think there was, um, what was, Gray Skull LP. So those are the three main novice programs, but I mean, here's here's the thing: if you can run a novice program for nine months, you're you're the type of person who's gonna get up to like a five hundred pound squat with novice programming, and that's the person who would benefit from micro loading. So it's just how how um. How aggressive do you want to take it? Because it's like, okay, um, it's like if you're building a car and you're like, hey, dude, we can, we can keep improving the gear shift or, or we 
can add a cylinder. It's like, okay, let's assume, let's assume if you're making a certain improvement on, like, one, one stage of the engine, it's like, say you're designing process by process, it's like, okay, we, we can't go back to the previous stage. Once, once you're an early intermediate, you might get exhausted earlier by running an early intermediate. Yeah, if you're running the same program, running the same program for, say, two years, you might get, um, say, for instance, you're running the Texas method, and just after, say, for instance, like, seven weeks, it's beating you up into a pulp, and then you're like, I'm going to do a, a, an HLM split, I'm going to do, I'm going to do 531, boring but big. You might have to transition to a different program eventually, and you wouldn't have made the same progress. But here, here's the thing. Here's, here's the thing. If you like the lift you're doing, I don't really think it's, um, it's getting harder. You know, um, okay, it's harder to push on harder weights in theory, yes, but. Here, here's the thing, like, um, if, if I'm almost going to do a deadlift, it would be more painful to her than Hathor Bjornsson pulling the record deadlift. Yeah, it's not technically the record, but because he did it equipped, the deadlift, you're not allowed to do equipped. But for an equipped deadlift, he, Hathor Bjornsson broke the world record. Now, here's the thing, he probably could have done a second rep. He probably could have gone a little higher. Um... That, that event, that's, that's another thing. Our subjective pain tolerance doesn't represent, doesn't represent, um, it, you're not as strong as you think you are, you're stronger. Because it's like, if somebody put a gun to my head, put a gun to my head, beat the crap out of me, and then said, I'm going to kill you if you don't. If you don't get this lift, you know, I'd be like, <laughs> you know, if somebody like dropped a weight on my foot, I'm like, ow, and then somehow lifting the weight equated to me getting to hurt them back. I'm not advocating for any of this. I'm just saying, s say for instance, somebody breaks up with you, you're getting ghosted by a friend you're getting broken up with, um, you might, <laughs> you might be able to pull out, hey, how would I hit it? PR when I went it's like oh I went from five pounds in a workout how did I hit that PR well you probably shouldn't have gone up so far the the thing is the um it goes up in waves so for instance when when you're an er rank novice this is like the stimulus and then it, it goes up The amount of stimulus goes up, but then it also closes, where it's minimum effective dose versus maximal effective volume. Here, here's ultimately what I would say with the microdosing. Here's the thing: if you have previous training and experience, no, microdosing, microloading. If you have, if if your previous best on the bench was like two twenty. Micro, you might as well micro load then because that's going to represent that's going to micro that's going to represent um, a PR. That's all I got to say. Toodles.